A very good evening to you. You're very welcome. My name is Jerry McDermott. I'm the Media and Communications Manager here at Fingal County Council, and I'm your host for tonight's webinar on the Fingal Coastal Way. The Fingal Coastal Way is a proposed greenway extending from Newbridge to Main and Donabay to the Fingal County boundary north of Balbriggan. This is the second of two webinars we are holding as part of the consultation process for the Fingal Coastal Way. Last Thursday, we looked at the northern section from Skerries to Balbriggan, and tonight we'll be examining the southern section, which runs from the south of Skerries through Loch Shinney, Rush and Donabate before finishing at Newbridge House. And if you missed our first webinar, you can watch a recording at our website, fingal.ie forward slash Fingal Coastal Way. And we'll also be putting a recording of this webinar up on the site. The overall length of the Fingal Coastal Way will be approximately 32 kilometres, depending on the final route selected. The Fingal Coastal Way is envisaged to be a flagship scheme for tourism in the county, with the potential to promote and enhance the local tourist economy. It will also be a major amenity for the residents of Fingal. Fingal County Council is currently undertaking the route option selection process for the Fingal Coastal Way, and we're seeking your input. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you will learn a lot about this exciting project over the next hour. This non-statutory public consultation process commenced on April 15th and is running until May the 27th. And it's important that we hear from you what you think of our plans. The purpose of tonight is to give you an opportunity to hear from the key people involved in the project. They are going to go through the plan and hopefully it will help to inform your submission. And submissions can be made at www.consult.fingal.ie. Now tonight, I have three guests with me and you'll hear from each of them during tonight's presentation. Paul Carroll is a senior engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department with responsibility for transport planning and strategic transport projects. Keno Calicor is a senior executive engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department and he is a member of the Fingal Coastal Way project team. And Stephen Wise is a senior engineer with Atkins Ireland who are the consultants to Fingal County Council on the Fingal Coastal Way project. We'll shortly have presentations from Keen and Stephen, and after the presentations, they'll be joined by Paul on our panel for the questions and answers sessions. Questions to Paul, Keen, and Stephen can be typed into the Q&A box, which can be found in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and as many questions will be facilitated. Those that are not answered will be passed on to the project team for consideration in the consultation process. And if we do have any technical issues, do bear with us, and we will endeavor to resolve them as they arise. Before we go into tonight's presentations, I'd like to invite Paul Carroll, Senior Engineer in the Planning and, Infra Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department, to formally welcome you to this evening's event. Paul. Thanks very much, Jerry. Um, good evening, everyone, and you're very welcome to this evening's webinar on the Fingal Coastal Way. Um, the Fingal Coastal Way is a long-standing objective of Fingal County Council, and it's our vision that we provide a high quality uh, amenity that's delivered in conjunction with the local community. And part of that is that we have these kind of exercises where we um, take on board everything that the local community has to say to us, try to make sure that we capture everything, all, all the knowledge that's out there and deliver the best amenity for yourselves, for visitors to Fingal, and um, for people who are using it to work, to get to work, to school, um, or for leisure purposes. <clears throat> um, as I say, this is the second phase of the consultation. We have further phases to follow as we move through the, the design and the planning stages of this scheme. Um, we acknowledge that there will be challenges as we move through such a, such a complex scheme, 32 kilometres in length. It's one of the longest schemes that Fingal has done in, in a number of years. And uh, we look forward to working with all members of the community to try and um, address any challenges that arise as we as we move forward. Um, having said that, I have no doubt that we will deliver what will be a, a world class facility for Fingal, for uh, the residents, for people who do business locally, and for visitors to the area from um, from Dublin and from the wider um, from Ireland and from around the world. So um, we have a couple of fairly brief presentations, about five minutes each. Um, so again, thanks for your time this evening. We look forward to hearing your views um, through the, the uh, Fingal consultation portal. So thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you, Paul. And uh, we'll be hearing from Paul later on um, in this webinar. Uh, he'll be part of our panelists for the uh, question and answer session. 
Now, let's go to our first presentation this evening, and it's from Kian O'Calico, who is uh, one of our, the member of the Fingal Coastal Way project team, and he's going to talk about the project and the public consultation process. Kian. Good evening. My name is Kian O'Calico. I'm a senior executive engineer with the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department of Fingal County Council, and I'm going to give you a project overview presentation on the Fingal Coastal Way. The Fingal Coastal Way aims to provide a coastal walking and cycling route linking Balbriggan, Skerries, Lochshinny, Rush and Dunabate. This will ultimately form part of a, a larger route from Dublin city centre to Sutton Cross, from Sutton Cross to Malahide through the Sutton to Malahide scheme, from Malahide to to Dunabate and Newbridge Domain through the Broad Meadow Way scheme, which has planning approval from on board Planola, and then our scheme from Newbridge Domain to Balbriggan. The scheme has rural and urban elements of Greenway extending approximately 32 kilometres. It'll encourage tourism, recreation and business, offering an attractive sustainable transport choice for residents, businesses, school children and commuters. We previously undertook a public consultation in November 2019. Um, information was posted to the consult portal, public information nights were held and questionnaires were filled out. That public consultation helped to inform the stage one feasibility and route optioneering. A large number of feasible routes were examined, circa 10 routes, the main assessment criteria were engineering, environment and economy. And the feasibility and options assessment stage one report was developed. This report is essentially what we are consulting on through this consultation. This feasibility and options assessment report reduces the number of routes from 10 to between three and five routes per section. They're to be assessed in the stage two route options assessment. We acknowledge that some areas and in particular skerries have more limited options. Following on from this public consultation, we will publish a public consultation findings report and we will welcome your submissions on the stage one report and the proposed routes. Uh, the diagram here represents the project timelines to date and the future projected timelines. At present, we're at options assessment and the purpose of this consultation, this phase, is to inform our decision-making process when we, as we move towards the emerging preferred route. So the project is done in stages. We started at 10 routes. We're now at between three and five. And we want input to help us move to one route where preliminary design can commence. Uh, this route options public consultation is a non-statutory online public consultation. It is It opened on the 15th of April and will be open until the 27th of May. Online information is available on Fingal County Council's website and its consult portal. Fingal County Council are not in a position to hold in-person events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We would hope as the project progresses into the next phases and ongoing consultation is engaged in, that, that there may be a return to some in-person um, meetings and events. Our website and consort portal includes information video, concept sketches, route options maps, feasibility and options assessment report, questionnaire, frequently asked questions and details on how to make a submission. Submission should be made online via our consultation portal or by post. And the final date for receipt is midnight on the 27th of May. As previously 
stated we haven't developed any preliminary designs at this stage, but we have developed a concept of what we'd like the scheme to look like look like on completion. Here's some some of the concepts around the Balbregan area, Balbregan Beach, Braymore and Fancourt Heights. Some more concept sketches in the Skerries area on the or 127 Balbregan Road and Skerries South Beach. This one is um, along the coast near Loch Shinney. And further concept sketches at Bond Road in Rush and Newbridge House in Dunabate. So the next steps for us on the project are to identify any issues of local concern through this consultation process, identify key project stakeholders. We'll review all comments, queries and suggestions made through this consultation. This will help to inform the development of the emerging preferred route and facilitate the preliminary design process. Another public consultation period will be undertaking, undertaken following this. And ultimately due to the complexities, of the project, a planning application will be made to Umbor Pranola. That's the end of my presentation and I'll be available to answer questions following the presentations. Thank you. And thank you, Kim. And remember, if you do have a question for Kim, please type it into the Q&A box, which you'll find in the top right hand corner of your screen and send it on to us. We plan to spend around 30 minutes answering your questions. And if your question doesn't feature, don't worry, it will be passed on to the project team for consideration. Now, our next presentation is on the route options for the southern section of the Fingal Coastal Way, which goes from south of Skerries down to Donabate and Newbridge House. Here's our project consultant, uh, Stephen Wise from Atkins, Ireland. Stephen. Hi, my name is Stephen Wise from Atkins Consulting Engineers. Uh, my presentation today will be focused on the route options assessment that has been carried out to date, which is the subject of this uh, public consultation process. The study area for the Fingal Coastal Way encompasses a large part of the North County Dublin coastline and extends from Newbridge to Maine in the south to the Fingal Mead border in the north. It is approximately 32 kilometres long in total and includes the towns of Donabate, Rush, Lockshee, Scaries and Balbriggan. For our assessment purposes, the study area has been split into two work packages. This evening we are discussing work package one, which extends from Newbridge to Maine to just south of Scaries and is shown in the red squares on this map. Each work package is then further broken down into subsections to allow as many routes as possible to be examined and which we will discuss in further detail. We are currently at stage one of the route option assessment process as shown in the diagram here, highlighted by the red oval. This involves identifying as many feasible routes as possible and carrying out a comparative assessment of these routes using the criteria of engineering environment and economy. This allows us to reduce the large number of routes in each subsection down to between three routes, which will then be further assessed in detail as part of stage two of the process. It should be noted that at this stage, we are primarily looking at possible corridors that the coastal way may travel along. The exact form and layout of the proposed scheme will be further developed as it progresses and will be tailored to suit different environments. The lines shown in the following maps are all indicative only and show these corridors. Where multiple routes overlap, they are shown side by side for visibility purposes, but this does not mean the particular routes are proposed to be located exactly in the position as, as shown. And they'll give you a brief overview of the assessment carried out so far, beginning with sub, subsection 1A, which includes the area around Donabate and the western side of Rogerstown Estuary. Twelve possible routes were initially identified, and these included a wide variety of ways through the study area including some which pass either directly through or adjacent to uh, Donabate village itself, some that travel um, through the nature lands at Turvey, some that travel between the two, 
and some which uh, travel to the west and around the estuary entirely. The results of the stage one assessment are summarised in the table here, where the green colour means that that route has advantages under the relevant sub criteria compared to other routes. Yellow means all routes are comparable, and orange means that that route has disadvantages when compared to other routes. The routes with the most green are the preferred routes, um, and in this subsection, that is routes 2, 3, 4, 9, and 11. These routes will now be brought forward to the detailed stage two assessment and are shown on the map here. For easier reference, the routes for stage two are color coded only. The legend in the bottom right corner shows the relation between these routes and uh, those on the stage one maps. In this area, three of the preferred routes travel eastwards from Newbridge um, and then either travel directly through or adjacent to, to Donham Bay Village. They then travel along Beaverstown Road until crossing Rogerstown Estuary adjacent to the existing railway bridge. Two of the routes would cross the railway at this location and travel through Rogerstown Park, while one would remain on the eastern side of the railway. The remaining two routes then travel west from Newbridge through lands at Turvey and generally skirting Rogerstown Estuary, following field boundaries um, until reaching Rogerstown Park. Uh, in terms of uh, the advantages of these routes, uh, the routes travelling east from Newbridge are preferred as they are direct linked directly to Donabate and avoid large impact uh, on landowners, while the two routes to the west um, are advantageous as they limit environmental impact on the estuary and require less complicated construction and structures to complete. Um, subsection 1B then um, is a relatively small uh, section which uh, links from Rogerstown Park here to uh, Spout Road and Rush here. This section does not form part of the assessment for the uh, Fingal Coastal Way as it will be delivered as part of a separate scheme which is required to provide access to Rogerstown Park and which is currently being progressed. Um, moving on to subsection 1c then, which generally encompasses the town of Rush. There were 17 routes identified initially in this subsection, which considered a large number of possible ways through the town. This includes a, a number of routes that follow either the coastline or immediate, immediately adjacent to it, um, along with routes on South Shore Road, Channel Road, uh, Main Street and other local laneways and streets. Well, in the northern part of the town, the routes generally travel um, close to the existing clifftop path or else along the Scaries Road here. There are also a couple of other routes that are out to the um, very west of the town um, that were considered also. The results of the stage one assessment show that there are five routes preferred in this uh, section, which are routes five, seven, nine, 11 and 14. These all have a number of advantages compared to other routes. These will then progress to the stage two assessment um, and are shown on this, the map here. Uh, two of the routes travel along South Shore Road, um, two on Channel Road and one on Sundry Road to the south. Um, towards the town centre then, two of the routes travel um, along Main Street directly while the red and green routes here provide links to town via Bond Road and also a loop around to the harbour area. Um, towards the northern part of the town then, two of the routes diverse onto the beachfront, while the remaining three access um, six cross lane here um, by means of following field boundaries through a number of uh, properties here. All the routes then follow the existing clifftop uh, trail northwards towards Dramana. The benefits of these routes include excellent scenic and coastal views, good links uh, to Rushtown Centre, and maximising of more attractive routes for walkers and cyclists. Then the final subsection um, in this work package then is 1D, which is uh, generally from Dramana to just south of Scaries. There are 12 um, routes identified initially in this section, uh, the majority of which uh, stay relatively close to the coast. 
um, with some local variations around the cliff tops uh, south of Loch Shinney in this area. And then there are a no number of other routes which are set back from the coast following various field boundaries, such as blue, orange and uh, pink route here. Um, and they generally move progressively in inland. Um, but there are also a number of routes that just follow the uh, Scaries Road here, the R128. The results of the stage one assessment show that there are three routes preferred in this uh, subsection, routes six, seven and eight, which all have a significant number uh, of advantages compared to other routes. The map here then shows the routes to be carried to the stage two assessment. These generally follow existing field boundaries uh, with two of the routes mostly following the first boundary set back from the coastline, while the blue option generally follows the next field boundary inland. There are some minor variations south where in particular the red route uh, follows the coastline more closely, uh, closer to the cliff tops, before diverting inland to the rear of the existing um, equestrian lands in this location. Um, all of the routes include linkage to Loch Shinney Harbour via uh, the main road access here as well. And then they all access back out onto the R128 um, either at this point or slightly further north um, before traveling along that for a section and then diverting out onto the um, existing pathway uh, at the scary seafront. At that point, then they will link into the proposed routes that uh, begin in work package two um, and will continue on from there. So uh, that concludes my brief summary of the stage one route options assessment, which has been carried out so far, uh, which I hope may have given some additional insight into the process. Uh, I'd encourage everyone to submit their feedback as part of the consultation, um, which we will then take on board going forward. So thank you very much. And thank you, Stephen. And remember, if you have any questions for Stephen or any of our panelists, please type them into the Q&A box and we'll try to get through as many of them be between now and eight o'clock. Now, let's switch on the microphones of all our panelists and go to our first question this evening. And it's for you, Paul Carroll. Uh, one of our viewers wants to know, is this project beneficial to Fingo? Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, this project is going to be hugely beneficial, I think, to to Fingal and to the wider Dublin region. And, and actually, it's going to be a national, uh, nationally important scheme that it's done. It'll fit into what's known as the East Coast Trail, which is ultimately going to link um, Wexford, Wicklow, Dublin, through Meath and Louth and onto onto Northern Ireland. So it's it's a huge scheme from that point of view. In terms of the local benefits to Fingal, um, most obvious one obviously is transportation. <clears throat> um, it'll be uh, designed in such a way that we try to hit as many uh, key destinations as possible. So that'll be train stations, schools, sports clubs, town centres, shops, um, cafes, restaurants, bars, all that sort of thing. So that we um, we make it a really useful route. Um, in terms of the leisure use, then it'll be designed so that it'll be a nice place to be. People enjoy going for a cycle, leisurely cycle in an evening like, like tonight, for example, or at the weekend. Um, you might bring the kids out, you might go out with a buggy, it could be a safe place from that point of view. Um, and you might go for a jog or a run, enjoy the scenery and the fresh air. Um, it could be designed so that it's, you know, it's, it's welcoming for people. We talk about making things accessible from ages 8 to 80. Um, so whatever your, whatever your age, whatever your physical ability, um, it'll be it'll be a great place to be. So that'll be you know a lot of time we talk about uh, the tourism benefit of this, but whilst that is important, and, um, the people who will get the most value out of this are the people who are there year year round, um, and that's local residents. You know, so we hope to make it as as attractive a place as possible. All those stated benefits that go with that, then in terms of people's health, people's well-being, uh, mental and physical. Um, and then, of course, the economic benefits that would come from that in terms of increasing accessibility to the town centres, the increase in commercial activity that will be um, delivered from that, from opening up access to a whole new cohort of, uh, of customers for these for these uh, town centre um, town centre businesses and the heritage sites along the route as well, for example. Um, 
so I think yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a long answer for a for a, a pretty straightforward question, but I think it's it's a real it's a real game changer for us, and it's part of a huge wider network both within Fingal and um, nationally, and ultimately we would hope that um, in time and not that not that far into the future either that we would be able to cycle from Balbriggan down along the Fingal coast down into Dublin City the Royal Canal through Dublin City, out through Fingal again and all the way over to Shannon and you might be able to do that without going on a, a road at all. So it's uh, it's quite an exciting um, time to be working in this kind of area. Thanks, Jerry. Yes, it, it certainly does sound ex exciting and certainly the way you put it there, uh, Paul certainly outlined the many benefits of this particular project to Fingal. Now the questions are coming in thick and fast, so thank you for them and do, do keep them coming. As I say, we will try and get to as many of them as we can between now and eight o'clock. Next question, uh, and I think Keen O'Calicor, I'll give it to you. Um, viewer wants to know, why is consultation with landowners so far down the timeline for this project in 2022? Yeah, um, I suppose the timeline we displayed earlier on in the presentation showed CPO finalisation for 2022. Um, this is essentially the start of the process that, that we hope to work through between now and then, um, with CPO being a last resort always. Um, any impacted landowners can contact us on at the customer care unit at fingal.ie if they have concerns and wish to engage with us um, from here on. We have had a number of landowners contact us and we've started that engagement with, with, with them. Essentially, the routes shown at the minute are indicative and we need to discuss local issues with the relevant landowners before we could finalise a route or a potential route through properties. Um, at present, they've generally followed existing ditches or trails um, in order to have a minimum impact on land use. So again, if you have any concerns and wish to discuss individual matters further, you can contact us through the customer care unit at fingal.ie and we will get back to you and engage with you from there. Okay, thank you, Kian. Um, now, Stephen Wise from Atkins, Ireland, dealt with the, the route options and that. And there, there's a route question here, uh, Stephen. Uh, one viewer wants to know, will there be segregation between cyclists and pedestrians on the Greenway? And how will safety be provided to all users? Uh, thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Um, I suppose the first thing to kind of state, uh, and I, this might go for a few questions, I think, is that the exact form of the Greenway, as I mentioned in, in my presentation there earlier, is not fully set in stone at this stage. Um, at the minute, we are looking at corridors and, and you know, routes that the Greenway may, might follow. We haven't pinned down exactly what that's going to look like. But what I would um, caveat that with is that typically Greenways are shared between pedestrians and cyclists rather than segregated. Um, I think what's worth pointing out though is that there is benefits to that in, in some ways which aren't necessarily apparent to people in terms of a few different things. For instance, um, you know, uh, it having less impact on, on land, for, for instance. But even from the point of view of users, um, you know, a wide kind of shared space can be more flexible in, in some ways in terms of allowing, say, a commuting cyclist at nine o'clock in the morning is probably not going to run, run into that many walkers and they actually end up with a much wider facility than they would if it was dedicated for cyclists only. Um, it also allows for, uh, you know, say families out together walking, for instance, they'll have more space. And even on a, on a more general level, having them, if people sharing space tends to kind of um, promote better behavior between different um, users. Um, you, you kind of get a you reduce sort of territorial feelings, for instance. Um, so it does kind of have a lot of benefits in that way, particularly, you know, the, the aim of the Greenway, a lot of it will be, you know, recreational and, and leisure purposes. But obviously we are trying to facilitate commuters and the like as well. But as I say, you know, the, a wider shared space can actually be more beneficial in that case. It gives you a bit of flexibility. In terms of safety, um, you know, the intention will be to have it segregated um, and typically away from roads as far as possible. 
that you know won't always be possible particularly say in, in the more urban uh, areas in the towns but even then the aim will still be to try and have it at least segregated by you know a curb or something it you know on a different height say um so safety from that point of view you know i suppose that the main thing that people look for and i suppose this has come back to us in the questionnaire um in our previous consultation on this scheme and i think so far in this one as well that people are mostly concerned about having segregation between vehicles and uh, walking and cycling. Uh, so the aim will be to, ha to provide that, you know, almost as throughout as far as possible. There may be some short localised sections where we will have a shared street. Um, but again, they'll be treated in a way that the idea would be to have vehicles uh, are made, made to feel as a guest on the road, um, which would be a very common way of things are done in Europe. Um, so that would be the intention, I guess. So, you know, in that way, I think it would be a very safe um, a facility for, for everybody and it will be designed um, certainly with accessibility for all um, at the forefront. Um, so that would that would be the intention. Thanks, Stephen. Well, Stephen mentioned uh, commuters there and um, there's a question has just come in and I'm going to give it to Paul Carroll. Uh, Paul, will linkages be provided from the Fingal Coastal Way to local amenities, schools and train stations and facilitate commuters as well as tourists? Yeah, ab absolutely, Jerry. That's that's um, a key part of what we're trying to do here. You know, it's, it's we're trying to deliver a really high quality uh, amenity point of view of having nice views and, and going to all the nice places that we want to go to, but it also has to have a more, I suppose, utilitarian function in terms of opening up accessibility to, to those schools, sports clubs, um, town and village centres, um, and shops and cafes and uh, local businesses, for example, that people get to on their day-to-day their -day travels as well, you know, and ultimately we would hope that this will, you know, facilitate people who at the moment might might drive make it make a five or ten minute car journey into to the local shop that this will provide a, a safe and attractive way for them to maybe swap the car and uh, walk or cycle instead so um part of the assessment process that Stephen and his colleagues in Acton are going through in, in a lot of detail is um trying to make sure that it hits as many of these key criteria as possible so there's a lot of different things that we want this scheme to do and accessibility would be one of the would be one of the top ones. So it's trying to get the balance right between all of those competing competing interests and to ultimately deliver something that um, meets as many needs as possible for as many people as possible. Thanks, Paul. Um, now, as, as well as commuters uh, on tonight, we also have landowners and uh, there's another question here. And Cian, I'm going to ask you to take this one. Um, viewer wants to know, will the route be fenced and what measures are in place to prevent trespass off the route into farmland? Yeah, um, obviously, as we move from the urban areas through land banks um, and into land ownerships, we will have to consider, you know, the protection of crops and land use and livestock and machinery and outbuildings and those are all issues which we will discuss on the ground with relevant landowners. Um, th through the CPO press process, it's always the first port of call to seek agreement and obviously um, the protection of, of property um, along the route um, would be very important. We wouldn't envisage that fencing would be required along areas of the route. Again, that's a detail that we'd have to agree with each individual landowner. And again, um, we can be contacted on the customer care unit to discuss those issues. OK. Um, Stephen, can I come to you? Um, viewer here saying there appears to be a lack of detail provided on the drawings, so it's difficult for me to imagine what the Greenway will look like. What is the proposed, what is the surface proposed for the route? Uh, thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Um, I suppose the first thing to say is that the at the drawings at this stage is it, we are only looking at the route options, as I was saying earlier. Um, so we are looking at you know corridors in effect. The details of you know what the what the agreement will exactly look like are still to be um, agreed and discussed, and that will be an ongoing process. Um, yeah, our next steps obviously are to do the the detailed assessment and identify an emerging preferred route and after that we'll be doing a preliminary design 
uh, before we go to planning. So there is quite a lot of details still that need to be worked out. Um, typically uh, for a greenway of this type, we would probably be looking at asphalts um, as it's generally the best surface, say for cyclists and wheelchairs and the like. Um, so I suppose that'd be our starting point. But again, you know, none of that is set in stone at this stage. OK. Um, moving on, and, and it's great to see that there's plenty of questions coming in. And don't forget that uh, Q&A button in the top right hand corner if you want to ask uh, one of our panellists a question. Uh, Paul Carroll, um, if I can turn to you, uh, one here. What is the point of a straight line route? Why not improve local circular routes in the first instance? Um, I suppose it goes back to that, uh, that point I mentioned earlier about having, having a, a route that does as many things as possible. So, um, you know, each of those routes will be assessed on a number of criteria and maybe, maybe we did look at those more circular or orbital routes um, and they didn't, they didn't meet our criteria in terms of providing access, you know, to places that we want, we want to go and that people want to go. So, um, I suppose the detail of, of how we arrived at those uh, conclusions and how we whittled down the number of routes from a large number, 11, 12 routes and um, down to kind of the five or six routes that we have now is all in the, the documents that are up on our consultation portal and that will that will explain a good bit of detail of how we how we assess them and the different criteria under uh, the three headings that um that Stephen mentioned there earlier so um the different environmental uh, costs uh, accessibility and, and directness and, and you know criteria like that um all come into play so it's 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 kind of a hard it's a hard one to give a a one size fits all answer for that kind of query, but I suppose just that we look at everything in the round, I suppose, and, and we try to we try to get the the best one that gives the overall best balance of, of benefits for each particular route. OK, um, Kian, junior presentation, you spoke about the public consultation and, and about the fact that people can make submissions to consult.fingal.ie. Uh, we have a question in on that point, and uh, one of our viewers wants to know how seriously will cons will the concerns that are raised uh, so far in the online portal be taken? Yeah, um, our first consultation was in 2019 and that helped us to get to where we are today and the options we're presenting today. Um, we need the general public's input and the community's input to help us get to a single preferred route. Um, we'll be taking, undertaking a further consultation later on in the year so that demonstrates the volume of consultation we're undertaking here and you know the design team need communities to engage with us whether in favor or against you know everyone's opinion is valid we will be producing a report and responding to all submissions on the portal following this process and we'll be publishing that um, so again in order for us to deliver the best scheme we can deliver we need each community along the route um, to help us to get there. So I would encourage you to make your submissions on any concerns you have um, onto the website. And that website is um, consult.fingal.ie. Stephen, uh, I have two questions here from you. Um, first of all, will the route be lit? And secondly, what are the plans for emergency service access along the route? So uh, to answer the first one about the, the lighting, um, I suppose again, that would be something that needs to be uh, fleshed out in more detail as we go through the process. I think the intention at the minute is that certainly in urban areas, it will be lit in say the more rural intertown areas. I think that's something that will need to be discussed um, for, you, I suppose, impacts on landowners and environmental impacts, etc. Um, I think that, you know, I don't think we'll have an answer to that question until possibly, you know, an, a bit further down the line. Um, the second one on the emergency services, um, the, uh, you know, intention similar to uh, what was done for Bell Doyle Port Marnock Agreement, which opened uh, last year, that is designed to take maintenance vehicles. Um, so that would be kind of the way we'd be looking at this, that it will be able to take emergency service um, vehicles along it. 
Um, there probably will be various access points as well, um, as I suppose Paul was sort of discussing earlier, linkages to various um, other amenities, etc. So there would be, you know, points along the route that the emergency services could access it, and it, it, the intention would be that they could drive along it. Okay, and um, thanks, Stephen. And, and as you've been hearing tonight, that route runs from Newbridge House in Donabate all the way up to the to Balbriggan and the county boundary with with Mead. And that's prompted a question here. And uh, Paul Carroll, you might answer this one: Will the Fingal Coastal Way provide connectivity to Portran? Yeah, this is this is one that's um, even already now on the on the submissions. Um, it's it's one that's been asked a lot and. As well as uh, connectivity to Lusk, and um, there's a number of submissions in on that as well. So, I suppose um, the short answer is the Fingal Coastal Way, as it currently stands, we're not we're not going to provide uh, direct access as part of this particular project. But what I can say is that our colleagues in uh, Fingal County Council, in the in the planning department as well, in the uh, Parks and Green Infrastructure Division, and um, they're looking at. Um, Rogerstown Estuary Management Plan, which is looking at a number of potential routes out further out the, the Donna Bay Port Ram Peninsula to link in um, to link in there. Um, they're also involved in the Rogerstown Park scheme, um, which Fingal has developed, and part of their work on that is to look at um, enhancing the connectivity of the park to both uh, Lusk and Rush and They'll be looking at uh, delivering a, a safer cycling walking routes between the park and, and Lusk on that. So ultimately, I suppose it, we, we're not providing as part of this particular project, but it is being provided as part of the overall kind of strategic vision of Fingal County Council for that for that particular area. OK, um, Keen, you're getting all the land questions tonight. We have another one in here and uh, one of our viewers wanting to know, will there be any compulsory purchase of land or houses? Again, um, just to reiterate what, what I said earlier on, we, we'd always seek to have agreement first with landowners. Um, there will be landowners affected. There will probably be boundaries affected. And we would discuss that all in detail with those affected in advance of going down a CPO route. Um, the CPO guidance itself sets out that agreement should be sought as the first port of call, and we'll endeavour to do that. With regard to the taking of houses, I don't believe there are any proposed in our current plans. Now, obviously, the routes are indicative, and um, Stephen may may want to come in on that. I'm not sure, but um, it's my understanding. The routes at present are indicative. And I suppose when we nail down the final preferred route later on in the year, we'll have greater detail on that. OK, Stephen, do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, well, like a backup cane there, there's no, there's no houses proposed to be, um, you know, removed as part of the scheme as it currently stands. OK, and um, Stephen, just another one for you, quite specific question here. Uh, Beaverstown Road in Donabate is extremely narrow and housing developments have been constructed on either side. Is this option really realistic? Uh, yeah, um, it's a good question. It certainly is narrow in, in sections for sure. Again, there's a lot of options open to us here, um, which, you know, mightn't be immediately obvious. Um, from our initial looks at it now, and obviously this will be subject to further uh, detailed analysis as we get topographical surveys, etc. Uh, but our initial look at it does suggest that we can generally fit along in, um, you know, it, by reallocating existing road space, for instance, taking verges. Um, there are a couple of pinch points along it as well. Um, again, that will be something that, you know, there'll be additional work to be done to figure out exactly how we get through there. But we do have the option of CPO or, or land take, as we were just discussing. And we also have other options such as traffic management measures. So there, there's a lot of things open to us there that will allow us to, to fit it up. OK, and uh, Paul Carroll, I think your last answer may have prompted this question. Uh, one of our viewers wanting to know, why does no route actually go along the coast at Donabate? Um, at Donabate? Um... That main out towards east, east towards Portran, or along the estuary. I'm not sure if it's along the estuary. Maybe it's probably because um, it's quite an environmentally sensitive area. If it's out towards Portran, I think I, I answered that previously. So 
I suppose. Um, yeah, it is a coastal way, but we, as I mentioned earlier, we have to balance every every need, environmental needs being one of them, and sometimes we do have to move um, a small bit away from the coast than maybe we might like, but um, that's that's just kind of there will be a mix of a mix of scenery and a mix of kind of uh, different type of landscapes that you'll move through along the route. So um, there'll be different different experiences for for different sections of the, the route. OK, thanks. I hope that answered the question for our viewer. Kian, um, some of the route options go through my land. How do I get more information on the potential impact to me? Um, I would recommend that you contact the customer care unit at fingal.ie and if you put in some detail a member of the project team will get back to you on, on specific questions. Um, with regard to severance of land obviously we would not sever land where a landowner couldn't get access. Um, there would always be access provided to land banks and areas of private land ownership across the scheme. So just to make that clear. OK, and just one more for you, Kian. Um, will additional parking be provided along the route? Um, for example, Loch Shinney has limited parking as it is at the beach. Yeah, um, the parking assessments along the route will be carried out at a later stage. Obviously, sensitive areas lo like Loch Shinney and where you might provide that, the detail of that hasn't been considered. Um, you know, th there's potential for additional parking maybe towards Rush. Um, but again, we haven't fully considered that and that's something to be considered at a later stage once once the preferred route has been fully established. OK, uh, Paul Carroll, if I can come back to you, still a lot of questions coming in around Donna Bate and Port Tran. Uh, this one uh, wants you to explain how the Fingal Coastal Way will link from the Broad Meadow Way and to Donna Bate and Port Tran beaches, which they say is vital. Yeah, absolutely. The Broad Meadow Way, um, as, as some of the viewers might know, um, was granted land permission last year. We're working through that now in conjunction with Irish Rail. And we, we are actually out on site doing some uh, surveying work at the moment and the big ground investigation starting up shortly as well. That will bring um, people across the estuary from Malahide um, and drop them off at uh, Newbridge Domain. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question. I suppose I mentioned that we are looking at bringing a connection from Donabate out to Port Roman to get to the beach. Um, and there, as part of the, the Donabate local area plan, there's other um, connections proposed to look at um, circular routes around that area to head out towards the direction of the uh, Donabate beach as well. So I suppose there is there is um, different objectives there to get um, different infrastructure on the ground to, to serve those needs. But <clears throat> just as part of this particular scheme, um, we don't we don't intend to do it as part of this uh, Fingal Coastway project. OK, thanks, Paul. Um, Stephen, if I can turn to you, um, I'll read this question out. Um, I think this is a great project. I understand that the designs are being finalised, but could you please talk about what options are under consideration for where the route goes down existing roads? For example, South Shore Road is the plan to keep the road mixed use uh, with markings and or signage and or to have dedicated space for the coastal way. Um, well, first, it's nice to hear somebody saying they think it's a great project, so it's always nice to hear. Uh, but to answer the question again, I think it's probably similar to um, when we were discussing Beaver's Town, that there is a number of options there that we will be looking at um, in a bit more detail, um, which might vary from, as they say, uh, road markings and signage um, up to like public realm interventions or traffic management measures, in fact. So, I mean, the, it, the idea, as I was discussing earlier as well, is to try and segregate it as far as possible. So where we might be able to do that, we might be able to segregate it, but it would mean, say, um, making the road one way, for instance, or, you know, that would be an option we'd be looking at, or making it a shared space where everybody uses the same space and the car is a guest, as I was discussing earlier, or indeed, you know, having a greenway at the side of the road and taking land from front gardens, for instance. So there's, there is a good few options there open to us that we will be looking at in detail and that will form part of the next stage as we get to the emerging preferred route. Um, so all of those are, are under consideration currently. 
OK, thanks, Stephen. Um, Kian, um, just another question in regard to the consultation process. Um, will submissions be visible to all with names attaching to submissions in a manner similar to planning applications? Yeah, if you, if you log on to our website to make a submission, it, your name is shown uh, along with a unique reference number. Um, when we're publishing the report, it's it's likely that it'll just be the reference number um, that's in the appendix highlighting all the submissions. You can write to us um, at Fingal. I don't actually have the address specific to this consultation, but it's actually on the website. If you, if you don't want to go through the portal, there is a facility to write to us um, as part of the consultation, if that would be your preference. OK, that's that's great. And, and as you say, it's on the website. The website address is um, www.fingal.ie forward slash Fingal Coastal Way. Paul Carroll, if I can come back to you. Um, will areas that do not currently have safe pedestrian stroke cycle access to neighbouring areas be prioritised when construction starts? For example, there is currently no safe walking cycling route from Lakshini to Skerries. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, it's it's one of the key one of the key objectives of the scheme is is to to open up that kind of level of accessibility that may not have been there in in times past. So, um, question specifically asks when when construction starts. I think we're we're probably a couple of years away from construction, so it may not be possible to directly answer that particular question. But what I can say is that as part of the overall scheme and the overall scheme design and the development of these route options that that is a key consideration for us that we do um, we do provide that level of cycling and walking accessibility to areas that um, may not have had that level of access previously. Sure. Okay. Th thanks, Paul. Um, now, I know time is catching up on us, so we're going to try and squeeze in as many questions as we can between now and 8 o'clock. Kian. Um, turning to you, uh, one of our viewers wants to know, would Fingal look to develop new facilities along the route, like sports pitches and picnic areas? Again, um, similar to the car parking question earlier, once once we finalise our preferred route, um, all those areas will be looked at. We, we've engaged with our arts officers to start considering what, what sort of artwork and how that might tie in with placemaking along the route. Um, obviously, once we go through the the consultation on the preferred route, that is something we'd be looking for considerable community um, input onto um, areas of local interest, local areas of natural beauty um, for all that kind of infrastructure along the route. So yes, that's something we'll be considering at a slightly later stage in the project. And Kian, that would include other things like toilets, charge points for electric bikes, additional bins, all that that uh, extra stuff will, will be considered later on. That's correct. We're looking at, as Paul said earlier, looking at providing a high quality facility. Um, you know, so they are things if they're of interest to people or if people can identify areas that may be attractors along the route. That's certainly something that, that we'd be interested in seeing on the submissions. OK. <laughs> Stephen, another specific question about the routes. Um, why are the preferred routes in subsection 1D between Loch Shinny and Skerries set so far away from the coast? Surely if it's a coastal way, it should be along the coast. I think this is sort of touches on what Paul was talking about earlier. Yeah, I think um, Paul sort of did mention this. Um, in general, so the stage one uh, routes, if you look at them, do actually include some that are basically right along the coast, we've had to allow a minimum setback um, to allow for um, climate change, coastal erosion and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, we don't want to go and build a, a lovely greenway and then have it, you know, in falling into the sea after a few years. So there needs to be a minimum setback. Uh, and then as part of the assessment, we've obviously considered that, you know, the impact that that would have on land severance, etc., and the amount of land that would be needed. So what came out of the assessment in, the, in that particular subsection is that the preferred routes do generally, they're about one field boundary in or two field boundaries in. What I would say is that even at one field boundary in there, you do still get fantastic coastal views and you generally do get the coastal experience. So while I take on board, yes, it is a coastal way as much as possible, that again, we are still trying to balance all of the other issues out with that. 
Yeah, and I'll just squeeze one more into you, Stephen. Uh, at Dramana, uh, Lakshini, uh, at Dramana in Lakshini, is there a poten is there a potential uh, problem there that the greenway will cause disturbance to bio biodiversity, flora and fauna, and the historical significance of the site? Yeah, so that that is all being considered. Um, it has been considered in in this stage, and it will be considered again in the stage two assessment. Um, Atkins have their own in-house uh, dedicated environmental team, so we have had ecologists, archaeologists, um, conservation architects, um, all looking at all aspects of this from the very start. Um, so there's a lot of expertise has gone into that. We've also liaised with the uh, Fingal's um, ar archaeology department as well, obviously Dramana being a very important um, archaeological feature in the area. And we have actually tried to, as you probably noticed that none of the routes that get through to stage two uh, actually pass through Dramana itself. So they've been located uh, far enough away so they don't impact on the site itself. But again, that will all still form part of the assessment as we go through the process. And just Stephen, you mentioned there stage one routes and stage two routes. I, will if, if a route has not been uh, brought forward to stage two, do you see yourself going back to stage one to take it forward again or is it gone? Um, so so obviously we'll be looking at the, the feedback we get from, from the public um, as part of this consultation. I, I would say, you know, unless there's a, a very specific reason for it to come back in the stage two, it, it's unlikely. Um, but again, I, I wouldn't rule it out just yet. Um, and I think that would very much depend on what comes out of this submission and, you know, information that we might not have been aware of, for instance, um, that might change the assessment process. Right. And just one final one for you, uh, just if you could answer me very quickly. Will coastal erosion be considered in the design? Yeah, yes, I mean, it has been, I suppose, if you look at the stage one maps and it might answer a general question of people asking why it's not directly on the coast. That has been considered, um, for instance, say in Rush, I think the routes that generally followed the dunes have not got through to stage two. And a lot of that is because of the environmental impact, but also the climate uh, change impacts and the coastal erosion. So it is being considered. Yeah. OK, thank you, Stephen. Paul, last question for you. Uh, what are the next steps in the process? OK, so we're at the route option selection process at the moment. Um, we have already got a good number of submissions in through the portal. Uh, we'll hopefully get a good more uh, before the submissions uh, deadline on 27th this month. Um, we'll spend some time looking at them and um, reviewing them, as Stephen says, seeing if there's anything there that we might have missed um, and finalising then our um, emerging preferred route option um, later on this year, probably about the autumn of this year. At that stage, we'll go out for another round of consultation and we'll have a more definitive route and we'll have a more detailed design. And I think that will um, deal with some of the queries I think that have come in already in terms of the um, the detail of the design that people may have expected to see that will be evident in the next round of consultation so um yeah we'll spend we'll spend we'll spend some time looking at at all all the submissions so please please do um make your submission and <clears throat> we look forward to we look forward to hearing from you okay well thanks paul and unfortunately we've run out of time uh, if your question hasn't been answered don't worry it will be forwarded on to the project team for consideration but thank you to everybody who did submit questions or comments and thank you all for logging in tonight i do hope you enjoyed our webinar it has been recorded and we will be uploading it onto the fingal coastal way web page which can be found at www.fingal.ie forward slash fingal coastal way you can also find a recording of our first webinar which dealt with the northern section of the route on the same web page. There is also plenty of information about the project on the website and if you do intend to make a submission, please remember that the deadline for submissions is May the 27th. Submissions can be made through our online consultation portal at consult.fingal.ie. My thanks to Paul Carroll, Keen O'Callacore and Stephen Wise for joining us this evening and providing us with plenty to consider in relation to the overall project and in particular the southern section from Skerries to Donabate. My thanks also to our production team for their efforts tonight. And don't forget to make those submissions. We need to know what you think of our plans for the Fingal Coastal Way. Until we meet again, goodbye and stay safe.